We're talking today with Mr. Howard Andrews of Grand Rapids, Michigan, and the interviewer is James Smither of the Grand Valley State University Veterans History Project. Okay, can you start us out with some background on yourself, and to begin with, where and when were you born? I was born in Meadville, Pennsylvania on November 1st, 1926. Okay. Now, did you grow up in Meadville? Or did you grow up there? Yes, I did. Okay. And what did your family do for a living then? My father worked on a railroad. Okay. And did he have steady work through the 30s? Yes, he did. Surprise. One of the few people that did work, I think, fairly steady. Okay. Uh, do you know what kind of work he did? He worked on the train, on freight trains, uh, as a trainman for okay. many years, and then he became a conductor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now, how many kids were in your family? Two. Okay. All right. And did your mother have it work outside the home, or? No, she didn't. Okay. Uh, and, let's see, did you finish high school? Yes. Okay. And when did you graduate from high school? In January of 1944. Okay. Uh, and then what did you do after you graduated from high school? I started college. Okay. And where did you go to college? Allegheny College. Okay. So right there in Meadville? In Meadville, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, and then how long did you stay in college? Well, I, I, I went for part of a year. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I took accelerated courses and summer school. Mm -hmm. So I got a year's college in by the fall of 44. Okay. Uh, by August, I'd say. All right. Uh, and now, uh, let's see, to back up a little bit, um, before Pearl Harbor happened, and you were still pretty young when Pearl Harbor happened, but had you been paying any attention to the news in the world? Yes. Okay. Uh, so you were following the war in Europe and that kind of thing? Very closely. Yeah. All right. Uh, now, was that just your own personal interest, or did you have teachers who were interested? That was my interest. Okay. And how did you get your information? Newspaper, primarily. All right. Okay. And then how did you learn about Pearl Harbor? I heard on the radio. Mm -hmm. I was in bed with the mumps. <laughs> and uh, I heard the news on the radio. And from mm -hmm. then on, I heard the radio on constantly. Okay. Uh, now, at what point do you enter the service yourself? Uh, enter the service? Yeah. Uh, I enlisted in October of 44 and went into active duty in uh, November 1944. Okay. Uh, now, why did you enlist? Well, I preferred to get in the Navy, mm -hmm. and I knew that I would be drafted as soon as I turned 18. Right. So okay. that was part of the reason, too. Okay. Now, why did you prefer the Navy? Uh, I guess just the, the work, the type of work. <laughs> Carrying a rifle, I felt better working on a ship. Okay. All right. Uh, so then, once you uh, enlist and are sworn in, where do you report for training? Samson, New York. Okay. Uh, the Navy Training Center. Now, what part of New York is that in? It's in the Finger Lake area. It was, it was on Lake Seneca. Okay. All right. And what did the training there consist of? Well, we were... It was winter when I went through a lot of the uh, basic training there. Mm -hmm. And if you know anything about that part of the country, you get a lot of snow mm -hmm. in the winter. So uh, most of our training was really by training film. Okay. Uh, we got some actual outside work, but it was primarily inside. Okay. Now, what were they teaching you there? Uh, how to identify Japanese planes, mm -hmm. how to fight a fire on a ship, uh, now, did they have a lot of emphasis on discipline and following orders? I don't recall that, but there was uh, not a main emphasis. Okay. 
Okay. Just no. Uh, did they teach you much about the Navy and Navy terminology and that kind of thing? Yes. Uh, there was some there, too. Okay. Uh, and do you remember much what kind of people were teaching you? Were they just other Navy personnel, a little bit older than you? Yes. Okay. They, they were people that had gone through uh, the training mm -hmm. and ended up teaching. Okay. They were not high-ranking people. They were, well, of course, a lot of it, it was video, too. Mm -hmm. Most so, of it. So was you were video. just watching movies? Yeah. Okay. All right. How long did you spend there? Sixteen weeks. Okay. Uh, so by the time you're leaving, it must be spring. Or maybe. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well I guess you got there at the very uh, late in the year, and yeah. so you're into March, maybe yeah. not. But anyway, okay. Uh, after you complete the training, uh, then what happens to you? Well, I went to service school right after the basic training. Okay. Or boot training, I think. All right. And I stayed right at Samson. Okay. I went through electrician school. Okay. Now, what did that consist of? Uh, basic electricity, uh, training on tearing a motor apart, for example, mm -hmm. repairing it. Uh, it was just a general electrician uh, course. Okay. All right. Uh, and then how long did that last? That was, uh, 16 weeks also. Okay. Now, when you're doing this training, do you get any time off? Can you go off the base? And uh, boot camp, you got one day mm -hmm. in a little town called Geneva. Mm -hmm. uh, once, we got, once I got into the service school, I had every weekend. In fact, I went, I went home quite a few weekends when I was in service school. Okay. I guess to, to Meadville it wouldn't have been too far. Uh, were there trains that ran that way or buses or? Well, I take bus part way and train part way, yeah. Okay. Uh, hitchhiking a lot of times. Mm hmm All right. Uh, now, so roughly when do you finish the service school? Is this now the summer or? Now you're talking early summer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now we're well into 44 at that point. Or actually, yeah, or 45? No, it was 45. 45, yeah. yeah. Okay, so do you remember hearing about the end of the war in Europe? For VE Day, where were you? What was that date? I guess. That's like May the 8th. I was still been in service school. Right, right. okay. I, I'm sure I heard about it either there, and if I had gone home, I would have heard it on the radio. All right. Now, so by the time you finish, the war in Europe is over, the war in the Pacific is almost over. Were you thinking the war might end before you got into it, or did you think it was going to go on a lot longer? What they told us was that it was going to last a lot longer. Mm -hmm. And we did, we thought it was going to last longer, uh, at least for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Now, once I got over there, I could see it wasn't going to last very long. Yeah. Well, pretty quickly after you get there, the, the war does end. Okay, but you finish service school now, and it's, it's going to be the, the summer of 45. Um, where do they send you next? Well, I went to California. Mm -hmm. um, Shoemaker, California. Okay. Uh, where I, I spent about three weeks waiting for transport overseas. Mm -hmm. Now, did you know what your assignment was going to be yet, or was no. you just going to be a replacement? Or no. Okay, so no idea. Uh, and where in California was Shoemaker? A little, not too far from uh, San Francisco. Okay. And did you get to go into San Francisco? Yes. Okay. We hitchhike in. Okay, so you see a little bit more of the country there. All right. Now, how did they get you out to California? A train. Okay. And do you remember anything about that train ride? Yeah. Uh, I was able to get on a regular passenger train. Okay. My dad worked on a railroad, mm -hmm. I told you. He got me a berth on a Pullman. 
Now, most of the guys who were going over, they went into a troop ship car. Yeah, troop train, yeah. Yeah. So I, I had a good trip over. Okay, so you had it much better than usual. All right. Uh, yes. Okay. Because the troop trains would sometimes stop a lot and let other trains go yeah. by. Yeah. Now, did your passenger train go pretty much straight through, or, or you have to change trains when no, you... No, okay. no, it went straight through. All right. Uh, and it's, well, it's regular schedule. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, uh, so you go to Shoemaker, you're there for a while, uh, and now they're going to give you an assignment. So when you leave Shoemaker, what happens next? Well, they put us on a, this troop ship. I call it a troop ship, mm -hmm. uh, to go over further over sea in the Pacific. Okay. Uh, it was full of um, sailors, mm -hmm. being, like myself. Right. They were going to be assigned once they got over further. Okay. Uh, and where was your first stop? In the we talk, as far as I recall. Okay. Now, on your way across, when you left San Francisco Bay, a lot of people talk about how everybody got seasick. Did the people on that ship get seasick or not? I did not. Okay. And I didn't see anybody that did get okay. seasick. So maybe a little quieter than usual getting out of there. Okay. When you did you you had to cross the equator to get to Anahuatl? No. Okay. Or is that still north of the equator? Yeah. All right. Uh, now and. Was Anahuidoc just a brief stopover, or would you get off there? Or? No, we didn't get out of Kipog. It was just a brief stop. Okay. And then where did you go from there? You go to the Philippines I, next? or I, I think that's where we went, the, uh, to the Philippines. It was in uh, Lady Gulf. Okay. All right. And when you got there, did they have an assignment for you? Uh, no, not right away. Okay. Well, they didn't tell me. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, so did you do you get off the ship then at Leyte or? No, we stayed on the ship. Okay. Uh, I don't remember how long. How long we were there before they assigned us to mm -hmm. the ship, and, and it, that was a case of you know one person at a time. So there were different ships coming in and out of the yeah. Gulf, basically. And, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then what ship did they assign you to? The Vulcan. Okay. And what was the Vulcan? The repair ship. Okay. Uh, and what kinds of repairs would the Vulcan do? Well, they had a, uh, a shop for repairing many things. They could repair uh, as large a piece of it piece of sheet metal in the hull, mm -hmm. uh, or they could repair time pieces. Uh, they could cover pretty well uh, cover the waterfront and repair. Okay. Uh, now, would that work? Would you? Would people from the ship go onto other ships to do the repairs? Yes, they would sometimes. Okay. Uh, and did you do any of that? No. Okay. I was not in a repair section. Okay. The ship was divided into two. Uh, there was the repair group, and then there was ship's company. Okay. I was in ship's company, and our purpose was to just to keep the ship going. Okay. Uh, so was there much actual work for you to do? Uh, or did stand, they... standing watch. Okay. Work. There was no work to do. Okay. You didn't have to fix anything. No. So you're trained as an electrician, but you don't really get to use that. No. Okay. Well, I'll tell you why. <laughs> when I went aboard the Vulcan, they didn't need an electrician striker. Mm -hmm. So they put me in the engine room. And after about a month, they came down and they said, okay, you can go to the electricians now. And or you can stay here. And I preferred to stay in the engine room because it was good duty. Hot and noisy, but nobody bothered you. Okay. <laughs> For one thing, they don't want to go down there. Another is you control everything. Hot water. So it was a good duty and I elected to stay in the engine room. Okay. 
Now, did the ship just stay in port pretty much the whole time? Did you stay in the harbor at Leyte, or did you go other places? No, it stayed right there until we left for Okinawa. Okay. Now, while you were in Lady Gulf, did you ever get to go ashore? No. Oh, wait a minute. I take that back. One day, they did take us over to, I don't know, I think it was some island or something. Mm -hmm. But it was not much of a liberty. Uh, they just land you on a beach somewhere and... It was a, nothing there, nobody there. Mm -hmm. Well, I shouldn't say that either. Some of the women came down selling straw hula. Hula skirts? Skirts. Okay. You know, but that's about it. So not really exciting. No, uh, no. Okay. No. Uh, and now, were you there when the war ended? Were you at Lady Gulf? Yes. Okay. And do you remember how you heard about that? When the Japanese surrender, or was that just announced? Uh, or? I think they, uh, they came over the uh, sound system on the ship. Okay. Now, before that, had you heard anything about the atomic bomb? About what? The atomic bomb. Because that was dropped oh, yeah, a few days yeah, earlier. Yeah. Yeah, we would get daily news. Okay. Uh, now, when they announced the dropping of the bomb, did that mean anything at the time, or were you not really sure? I don't think it meant... Uh, I guess I'm not sure what... Uh, I knew that atomic bomb was going to be very destructive. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I didn't know whether they would surrender as quick right. as they did. Right, because we today tend to associate the two pretty closely, but at the time you heard about one before the other and wouldn't necessarily make that connection right. until afterward. Yeah. yeah. But, but okay. There was a lot of hollering and jumping around at that night mm -hmm. that the uh, surrender was right. announced. Okay. Uh, and then, how long do you think you stayed in Lady after the surrender? And do we have a time people yeah, on? Yeah, do I? So when does he go to Okinawa? He left Lady on the 14th of September. Okay. So you're there basically about a month after the Japanese surrender. Uh, and then you go on to Okinawa. Um, and what did you do there? Well, we were well. We would repair ships wherever mm -hmm. we went. But, okay. Uh, now this would be mainly small ships, mm -hmm. landing craft type. Uh, something as large as a destroyer, maybe. Mm -hmm. Now while we were there, we had to leave because they they said a typhoon was coming. Mm -hmm. So we left and went over to the China Sea and sailed around. We were probably gone, I don't remember, maybe a week or two. Okay. Uh, now, did you manage to stay out of the typhoon? Yes. Okay. Because I have talked to people who had to go through that. Okinawa got hit real hard. Yes, it was. Okay. Uh, and so, but did you go back to Okinawa again after that? Yeah. All right. Uh, and then, while you were at Okinawa, did you ever go on shore? Yes. Okay. I did. And what did you do there? What did you see there? Well, now there were two of us on Liberty, uh, and here again, things were pretty well bombed out. Mm -hmm. uh, now we did, we were not too far from the capital, mm -hmm. so we decided we'd go over to the capital and take a look. So we went up and hitchhiked a ride in an army jeep. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> We got over, there was not much to see. Right. Yeah. And they warned us to stay on, stay on the road. There were still, the war was over, mm -hmm. but some of these soldiers didn't know it. Okay. So they told us to stay on, on the road. But that wasn't a very exciting day either. It was mm -hmm. Now, did you see anything of the civilian population there, or were they all out of the way? I don't recall seeing any 
anything, anybody mm -hmm. there. Okay. Now, in, in the capital itself, had the buildings largely been damaged by the fighting, or were they still standing? Uh, you know, I don't remember too much about it. I'm okay. not sure we even got downtown in that mm -hmm. city. We may have. Because I remember seeing my I must have turned right around and gone back. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, and then after that, um, where do you go next? So after Okinawa. Well, if we started hitting the Japanese ports, mm -hmm. I, um, I don't remember anything before Hero One. Okay. But we did have a couple of stops prior to that. Uh, we just stopped at Hero One for, I don't know, several weeks, I think. Mm -hmm. But that was where we got a ride over to Hiroshima. Mm -hmm. they, they took half the ship one day and the other half. So you rode in the back of an open truck. And the first group to go over, the other half of the ship, they let them loose. They could wander around. Mm -hmm. I was over the went over the next day, and we just rode around in the bus or okay. in the, in the truck. truck. Uh, I think they, somebody told them that we shouldn't go there mm -hmm. at that point. You think there were people going around picking up souvenirs or? They did. Yeah. Yeah, they did. We didn't get off the truck. Okay. Well, what did Hiroshima look like? There was not much left. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it was pretty bare, uh, bare ground. Um, I can remember seeing one building, concrete building, mm -hmm. and that was about all as far as buildings go. The rest of it was just flat. Right. Okay. Uh, and. As you're going back and forth then in Japan, now were you seeing anything of the local population then, or were they? Uh, I don't remember seeing any in uh, in Hiroshima. Now, when we first got to uh, Ko or Korea, Curry, mm -hmm. we didn't see many civilians uh, for the day or two. Right. Uh, but then the after the first day, they started coming out, not many, trying to sell something. Mm -hmm. They were looking for money. Right. And they'd have their own personal stuff that they had for sale, silk handkerchiefs mm -hmm. and kimonos. Uh, and that's the way it was for quite a while, actually. Mm -hmm. it was, we just didn't see many civilians. I don't recall ever seeing a man of military age mm -hmm. in Curry. At least for, for a long time. Uh, it was women and children, a few older men. Mm -hmm. We didn't see many civilians because they had to walk in from somewhere else. Okay, because yes, Curry is, was a Japanese naval base. Yes. So now you had just taken that over. Uh, we were taking the harbor over, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Um, uh, yeah, we were the only American ship in there. Okay. All the time I was there, except for the uh, some of us came in for repair. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our, our captain, as I understand it, was the head of that area, mm -hmm. and he was a full captain. I never saw another mo uh, motor. Uh, another car mm -hmm. or truck. Right. All the time I was in Curry. Not a one. Okay, so the Americans didn't have any either? Did the Americans have any trucks or? We didn't see any Americans other okay. than the, the ships. Navy people. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> we, we never got out of Curry, mm -hmm. uh, there was no way to get there and no place to go. Like I said, I never saw a motor vehicle all right. the time I was there. Okay. And there's no town to go into or anything like that? Yeah. 
We did walk to the outskirts of Curry, mm -hmm. and where they we saw school and some houses, but for the most part, Curry was flattened through, mm -hmm. bombed or burned out. Okay. Now, about how long do you think you stayed there? In Curry, about uh, three months. I think it was. Okay. All right. And during that time, did you? really get to go anywhere else or do anything else or were you just staying on the base and on the ship? Just on the base, really. Mm -hmm. Like I say, there was no play, no way to get anywhere. Okay. Now, <laughs> I didn't know where to go anyway. Mm -hmm. No place to go. Right. Okay. Um, now, does the, did the Navy provide any kind of entertainment for you? I mean, did the USO come through or anything like that? No. They built a building there that was put up before we got there, actually. Mm -hmm. It was nothing but a plain building, some picnic tables inside, and so we went and drank beer. Mm -hmm. That was the main entertainment, drinking beer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we walked around this, the city. Mm -hmm. There was something to do. We, we went over. We could go over just about every day. Mm -hmm. We didn't have watch. Right. And uh, so we did a lot of walking around the city, just looking, talking to anybody we could, <laughs> that would talk to us in okay. English. Uh, and so did you find some people who could speak English? Yes, okay. yeah, we did. Uh, and what sort of impression did you have of the Japanese people that you met? Very friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they were willing to talk to you if uh, they could speak English. Mm -hmm. And they were, they were selling their personal belongings. I bought two pair of, or two kimonos mm -hmm. from a gentleman. It was his personal kimonos. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what they did primarily. If, any, if anything, they, they sold what mm -hmm. they had. Uh, okay. Now, uh, one of the stories that comes out a lot about the occupation was that there were uh, issues with things like prostitution and people going into bars and, and things like that. Where you were, did you see any of that kind of thing? Absolutely no bars. Yeah, okay. So no. There was not such a thing as a bar or a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Now prostitution is something else. There, there were houses. Mm -hmm until the Navy shut them down. And then instead of central houses, every house turned into a, a cat house. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, no restaurants, no bars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, so there were, now did um, the men from your ship get into trouble? And did they have problems with the civilians or no. anything like that? So reasonably well behaved. Yeah. All right. Uh, now, while you're there, are you getting much news or information about what's happening anywhere else, or are you just? Of course, it's after the war is over, so maybe there's not too much. Uh, well, we did get daily news. They had a well, it's sort of like a little newspaper that would come out mm -hmm. daily news. So. We could keep up with what was going on, uh, not in detail. But right. Okay. Now, were there men from your ship who were starting to rotate home? Yes. Yeah, those the older guys that had enough points would get called out, and they would head for home. Mm -hmm. And some of the some of the lower point guys got taken off the ship and put on other ships to go, well, they were going down to Bemidji to do the um, atomic... Okay, b bikini, yeah. Bikini, yeah. Right. Uh, okay. That was one reason why I didn't have to go. Mm -hmm. I, I was at the point where I was a senior fireman, mm -hmm. and I, so, so I stayed on the ship where some of these guys had got ratings, mm -hmm. when I couldn't, they were shipped on. Also, uh, 
I got to come home on the ship. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so when does the ship leave Japan? Okay, so March 4th, 1946. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, now, when you were sailing back home, did you stop any place along the way? Stopped in uh, Pearl Harbor. Okay. Uh, and what did you see at Pearl Harbor? Well, there's st they still were um, ships in the harbor that bombed and mm -hmm. sunk. We were only there overnight. Mm hmm. We didn't have much. We we got liberty, mm -hmm. and all we did was took a cab, I guess, out to Waikiki. Nothing going on. Yep. <laughs> Pretty dull. Mm -hmm. uh, that was our liberty. It was one night. Okay. And then from Hawaii, where do you go next? San Francisco or somewhere else? No, Panama. Okay. We came back through the canal. Spent. Uh, one night, about two days in Panama, though. Mm -hmm. uh, the ship had a money for a party. Uh, so I had a nice party, nice night club, open air night club. Mm -hmm. All the booze you could drink. If you wanted to drink, you went up to the bar and I'd get a drink and they'd give you a bottle. Mm -hmm. That type of thing. Okay. And they're... Uh, but, well, now here again, you know, Panama was wide open. I mean, there wasn't anything you couldn't get there. Mm -hmm. And they had a lot of women just sitting along the street. And, uh, of course, the guys took advantage of it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess other than that party, there wasn't too much we did in in Panama. Yeah, we just went through the canal. Yeah, right. It took about a day for to go through the canal, which gets boring after a while. You know, one canal after another. Mm -hmm. They're pretty much the same. Okay. And were you in the engine room during that time, or were you up on deck? Or? Part of it. I, I was on deck part of it. Okay. Uh, I know I got tired of watching the canal, so I went down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Took a nap. Okay. All right. So when you come out on the other side, now where are you going to go in the States after that? Brooklyn Navy Yard. Okay. Uh, and when you got there, did you get discharged, or did you stay on duty for a while? No, I was on leave there for, I think about uh, well, several months anyway, mm -hmm. possibly longer than that. Do I have that down? But I don't. Well, it just said you arrived in Brooklyn on the 15th of April. Oh, well, I was there for, I was there for about three months. Okay. Now, did you have duty there? Were you still no. okay? No, because they had uh, our ship was in for overhaul. Okay. And so when we got, they used outside contractors for everything. Mm -hmm. We didn't do anything on the, sh the ship at that point. We had nothing to do but uh, play cards and go on liberty. Mm -hmm. So you got to see New York City anyway. Three months. <laughs> okay. Every, we had liberty every day. We didn't yeah. have lunch. Now, did they still have USO and things like that in New York City, or had they shut that stuff down now? And were there places you could go I, in New I York City? See, I didn't see any. Okay. Because no. during the war, they had a lot of that kind of thing in places for servicemen, but the war now had been over for a year or so. Well, Maybe not. They still had them in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Over. But uh, New York, I didn't see anything. Okay. Well, in San Francisco, when you went over, the war hadn't ended yet, so that was going on. Okay. Um, and so when do you finally get discharged? 
July 3rd, 1956. Or 46, yeah. 46. Okay. All right. Uh, and then after you got out of the Navy, what did you do? I didn't do anything for the rest of the summer. Mm -hmm. But I started back to school in the fall. And I had, well, basically I had three more years to okay. get yep. my degree. All right. And, and what, did, what did you study there? Chemistry. Okay. And when you got your degree, what did you do? Well, I got a job with uh, electric auto light. Okay. Battery division in Niagara Falls, mm -hmm. New York. And uh, I worked with batteries for the rest of my working life. Okay. Uh, at that point, it was Autolite. Well, part of Autolite was bought by Ford. Mm -hmm. So I became a Ford employee in 1961, I believe. Okay. Um, I worked for Ford until I retired. Okay. Now, did you, when you worked for Ford, did you come to Michigan, or did you stay in New York, or? No, I went from Niagara Falls, and I went to Toledo. Mm -hmm. Then I came to Michigan. Mm -hmm. I actually moved to Ann Arbor, but I worked in Dearborn from then on. Okay. All right. Now, uh, when you think back to the time that you spent in the Navy, are there other memories or things that kind of stand out in your mind that you haven't brought into the story yet? Uh, no, I guess what kind of stands out is the transportation. trains up there, I don't, I don't even know what railroad it was, but it was old cars and everything, and they were in late. Uh, <laughs> hours you could wait for the train. Okay. Now, did some of these still have steam engines and coal burning? Oh, or? yeah, yeah. Yeah, everything uh, back then, I think, was pretty much uh, coal. Okay. Or in a steam engine. Mm -hmm. yeah, the diesel didn't come in for quite a while after that. Yeah, well, I think that there, some of them existed, but maybe that fuel was being used for other purposes. It could be, yeah. yeah. So, um, okay. Now, to look back at the time that you spent in the Navy, uh, how do you think that affected you, or what did you learn from it? I think it was a good experience. I think it, uh, with the training and everything, I, uh, I think I can say that I enjoyed it. Okay. Much. Yeah. All right. Well, then, uh, thank you very much for taking the time to share the story today. You're welcome. All right.